Hi, Bob from PineGrow here with another tutorial. This tutorial is going to be a little bit more theoretical than some in this series. Both the Bootstrap 4 and Tailwind blocks in PineGrow utilize inline scalable vector graphics or SVG images. Unlike other types of images, SVG do not use pixels and instead use a series of vectors to create images. This means that they're highly responsive. They can scale up or down on the page without losing resolution. And SVG are great to use when you have images made up of geometric forms with crisp lines. PineGrow has great support for SVG and in this tutorial we'll cover the basic terminology of SVG, how to manipulate them in PineGrow, some of the pros and cons of inline SVG versus embedded SVG files, and finally, how to use PineGrow interactions to animate our SVGs. So let's get started. There are two really important concepts to understand when using SVG. Again, SVG are graphics composed of a series of geometric shapes, including points, lines, and polygons. They can be very simple, such as the example here on the left, like a rectangle on an axis of a chart, or they can be really complex, like the graphics seen in Bootstrap for Block's agency template, or the Tailwind templates, or the one shown here to the right. Whether simple or complex, however, both are drawn on a canvas that is essentially infinite in size. The first important concept is that when we place an SVG onto our web page, we are defining how much of that infinite canvas we are seeing. This includes both the overall area of the canvas we are seeing, but also the location of that area. So we can choose to view only a small 100 pixel by 100 pixel region of the canvas located in the very center, or a larger 1000 pixel by 1000 pixel region located at the upper left. This allows, for example, the creation of files containing multiple SVG images tiled in a grid. A single image can then be selected from within that file by just changing the region of the canvas being displayed. The area of the canvas that we are viewing is defined by the view box attribute. The second important concept for working with SVG images is that the size of the slice of the canvas that we select whether it is 100 pixels wide or 1000 pixels wide, can be scaled up or down into a region of the screen defined by a viewport. This isn't to be confused by the normal browser viewport. This is basically a subsection of that larger viewport, but it's still called a viewport. So the same size viewport can be used for both slices, whether they're 100 pixels wide or 1000 pixels wide, without a loss of resolution. Let's go ahead and look at that viewport. To do that in PineGrow, I'm just gonna make sure that the SVG itself is selected rather than the rectangle that I have here on display. Then I'm going to switch to the properties panel. We'll just go ahead and close these up so we can expand this a bit. Okay, so setting the SVG viewport is essentially the same as setting the height and width of any element on the page. You can set it either using inline or CSS style sheet properties of width and height, but more preferably, it's better to use those same properties as attributes on the SVG element itself. Within the PineGrow properties panel, there are input boxes that allow you to set both here and here. In this example, I've set both the width and the height to 200. The SVG viewport attributes can take unitless values that will end up using the same units as the parent element or the browser. Typically, this is pixels. Importantly for responsiveness, they can also take uh, uh, units such as percentage, view width, view height, or M, just to name a few. This allows the region of the page they take up to scale. I should also point out that the viewport is scaled in relation to the parent element in most cases. So if you put the SVG element into a bootstrap column that takes up half the page width, setting an SVG width of 100% means that it'll take up the entire width of the column or 50% of the page. So the view box attribute, which is the next one down in the properties panel, receives four values. These values can either be separated by commas or spaces. 
The first two values are the X, Y coordinates on the canvas where the viewport upper left corner should be located on that canvas. They can be either positive or negative values. The next value, here set to 200, is the number of units of width that the viewport should display. And then the final value, again set to 200, is the number of units of height of that canvas that the viewport should display. Both the height and the width have to be positive integers. Note, this number of units will fill however much screen space you have allocated using the viewport. This can be a little bit hard to understand when you're first starting to use SVGs, so let's look at this simple example. Okay, so in this first example, if we go back here to our tree, look at our rectangle. We have a rectangle that starts with an X position of zero on the canvas, so the very upper left corner of the canvas, a Y position of zero, again, uh, at the very top, and then it has a width of 100 units and a height of 100 units. Note, the width goes to the right and the height goes down from that origin point of zero, zero. I'm not gonna go into other SVG drawing commands in this tutorial, but I think this one is good enough to illustrate the points that we need to make. As I said before, going back to the SVG, my, um, my viewport is set to 200 by 200. This will derive its units from the parent element, and so it'll be 200 pixels wide by 200 pixels high. Uh, and I've put basically a blue dotted line around that viewport. Now, if we look at the view box input, it is 0, 0, 200, 200. This means it'll start displaying the canvas at 0, 0. Remember, that's the origin of where we started drawing our rectangle. Then it will display 200 units to the right along the x-axis, so along here, and 200 units down on the y-axis, so that's here. So the square itself is only 100 units high and 100 unit wi units wide, so it only takes up half the view box in each direction starting in the upper left corner. So now here's where it gets a little tricky to illustrate, and we're gonna switch to a multicolor square. In order to do this, I'm just going to navigate back over to the tree. I'm going to select that SVG rect, and I'm going to replace it with some code I already wrote. Uh, and basically, this is just saying draw four different rectangles, each 50 by 50, uh, so taking up half the width. Uh, and then I filled them with different colors and changed the origin so that they would draw as uh, sort of a single uh, square, even though they're made up of four smaller squares. Okay, so now going back over to our SVG and our properties. Uh, what happens now if we change our view box to 50, 50, 200, 200? Remember, those first two numbers are where we want to start displaying the canvas from. So in this case, we're going to go in by 50 and down by 50. So let's go ahead and change those. Now we can see only the little blue square that was in the lower right. And that's because again, we started drawing at zero, zero, but we're saying let's start displaying our canvas, not at that zero, zero where we started drawing, but at 50 over on the X and 50 down on the Y. And that's where we started our blue square. And now what happens if we change the third or fourth values? So we're gonna change it to 100 and 100. So now what we're saying is take that 100, uh, starting at the upper left corner, take 100 units of the canvas um, on the x-axis and 100 units of the canvas on the y-axis and then stretch it out to fit our entire viewport which is 200 pixels by 200 pixels. So we can see that our uh, entire unit, if I can hover correctly, is still 200 by 200. But now that 100 by 100 unit um, uh, multicolor square fills the whole thing. So if this were a raster image, so an image made up of pixels, um, basically each single pixel uh, would now be 
uh, two pixels by two pixels. So the browser would stretch that out. If we had a complex image and the browser did that, we would get some pixelation depending on what the resolution of that image is. In this case, since it's an SVG and it's drawn on the fly with vectors, we don't have to worry about that pixelation. So the same thing also works uh, to shrink our images. So instead of putting 200 in here, let's say we say 500 by 500, we can see that now we're displaying all of that uh, region, a 500 by 500 region of the canvas, but um, we're uh, making it fit into our original 200 by 200 pixel view box. So again, uh, we don't see any kind of loss of resolution. So this is one of the really uh, great powers of using SVG. Most of the time, we're going to leave our view box alone. We're going to leave this set to whatever the size is of the image we want to display. And to shrink or stretch our images or enlarge our images, um, we're going to change the viewport size, so the width and the height here. If we have a responsive page, uh, this means that the width height ratio of our viewport could become different than the ratio uh, of our SVG image. So if the, the SVG image scaled both the width and the height independently, it can result in a squished or stretched image. Um, luckily, uh, SVG as a default has something called preserve aspect ratio as an attribute that uh, doesn't allow that to happen. It always makes sure that our width and height ratio stays the same. As I'll show you at the end of this tutorial, you can do or make changes to that preserve aspect ratio if you feel like uh, to change how the SVG scales. Most of the time, that particular attribute really isn't changed, but you can do some interesting things with it.